Hi everybody, it's Tommy Jo from Bird Street Studio. And I started working on, I'm trying to put together a flamingo journal. It's so funny because I had this in mind and my girlfriend said, oh, you ought to do a flamingo journal. And it's like, oh, I'm working on it. Anyways, um, this one, I pulled this one off because this is one that printed with the flamingo out here. So I'll probably use this as a collage page. But anyways, I've been putting together these pages and it's a combination of digitals from a couple different places and some of my own. So um, I just wanted to show you the papers and then as I do projects to go in this journal, I thought I would bring you along with me. So today, I'm gonna show you the papers, but today we're gonna to be making these flowers that a long time ago I had some leftover cardstock and I stamped them with these flowers and I thought, oh my gosh, I can color these with my Copics or my Blicks and incorporate them in this journal. So I'm gonna do very bright colors. So that's what we're gonna to do today. Maybe something else, we'll see, because I might fast forward through some of that coloring. It kind of, I love doing it. It's so relaxing, but I'm sure it's boring for you. But anyways, let me show you the digitals that I have so far. And I may add some more as I put them together on my computer. But anyways, so I've got this and I backed it with this one. And I have this and it's backed. I think the back is from, might be Leanna Scraps. So I have this one, and it's backed with that. This is a back. Here's a front. Aren't these beautiful? And then it's backed with that. And this is a front. Backed with that. And then this is a front, and it's backed with that. So, so far, those are the papers that I've put together, and it's really a combination of, like I said, different digitals and um, graphics of my own. And I just thought with all these very bright colors that these flowers would go so, so well on tags, uh, envelopes, journaling cards, anything. I can put them anywhere in here, belly bands, so I thought I would go ahead and spend some time coloring them because it's what I love to do. And of course, I love my alcohol markers. So I'm going to kind of show you um, what I've done so far. So, so far, I've done this um, kind of gold or yellow colors, and I thought those were quite pretty. And so I'm using, right now I'm using my Blix, and then this yellow is the, is the center of all of these. And then I'm using a, uh, a fine liner to make the circles. I'm not even going over the outside because I'm cutting them out. So here's the piece separately when you cut it out. Then I did these this pink color. And then I did this blue one. I haven't cut this one out yet. This lighter color was running out, so I didn't want to take a chance of like making another one and have the ink run out. But this is the one we're going to start with today, and I made this one first. I love this color, really pretty blues. So anyways, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to color, um, color these. I'll probably fast forward through the coloring, but in the beginning I'll show you how I use the markers. And then I've got uh, some purples picked out, so I'm going to sit down and we'll get started. So what I've done is I've set my markers out so that I've got the lightest, the medium, and the dark. And you can't always go by the, the lids. So what I have done is I have um, made swatches of my markers. So these are all the markers in the set. And then I made a swatch set like this, and this was at a recommendation of um, Lindsay, um, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, but I took a class with her for alcohol markers and she suggested that we do this, poke these holes because then you can hold this color over another color and see how it matches. And I thought, oh my gosh, what a great idea. 
So what I've done is I went ahead and picked out color, these three blues, by using that same method. So where this one is Lake Placid. So I found Lake Placid on my sheet here. Let me find it. Um, should be around here. Okay, so this is Lake Placid. But the second one, the medium, is Niagara Falls. So I went with this one here. So I picked Niagara Falls here and I held it over the Lake Placid and I thought that was a beautiful move from there. And then from the Niagara Falls to the blue gray and I held that and I thought that would be perfect. So that's how I picked the colors. I did the same thing with my purples. Um, and I'll show you those in a minute. And I did swatch those on a piece to show you. So anyways, let's get started. When you use alcohol markers, <clears throat> everybody uses them differently. And I really don't know if there's a right way or a wrong way, but I know how I use them. And I tend to base with a light, go in with a dark, blend with a medium, and go all the way over with light again. So basically, this is my lightest color, which is, let me see. Yep, Lake Placid. Okay, and I these blicks come with a brush tip and a chisel point, and I almost always use a brush tip. Now, I went to Blick Markers. I have Copics, and I use them all the time, uh, and I love them. They are refillable, and Blicks weren't for the longest time, so I didn't invest in these. But once Blicks went to refill, I went ahead and invested in the Blicks as well because they're a little bit less expensive. So basically, I'm going to just um, start with coloring the whole flower light first. And you don't have to be real careful because we're going to cut these out. So don't worry about staying in the lines. And if you ever watch me color, like even on a coloring page, which I love to do, that's one of my relaxation outlets, um, I turn my piece. So we just start with the light. And I've set it down the same way the order is so I don't lose that. So this is the medium, but I want to go with the dark. And I'm going to go from the center out like this with the dark. And I'm only going to do like three or four at a time. Because the important thing about alcohol markers is to blend, they need to be wet. So you don't want to give it too much time to dry. This is the medium that should blend out this dark. Okay. And then we go back to our light. And I'm going to use the chisel tip for this. And I want to blend. Some people flick in. I just want to blend this whole thing. And you'll see that it even blends nicer when it dries. You can use your um, brush tip. The key to this again is you need to blend when they're when the colors are wet. Okay. And then if you notice, then it's darker in the center. And if you want to blend a little more, you can do that. So again, I'm going to go with my very dark. And we're going to do the last ones. Okay. 
and again lay it at the top so I know what order I'm in. It's funny, but even though I know I lay them in the right place, I always check anyways. I'm just going to finish this one up and then I will show you how I do the center. It's so, like, so easy. But these are so relaxing. I mean, I can watch other videos and that while I'm doing these and I, it's all in preparation for um, doing my own journal. So then I take the yellow. I already decided this is called saffron because I love it. It's a bright yellow and it's one of the colors that I used for these flowers here. That way, on all the flowers, the centers will be the same. And this stamp has like little dots, but I just, uh, or little circles in the center. Can I, am I showing that on camera? Um, but I just fill in in between those as well. So that's that one. And I'll do this one later, but I wanted to show you um, a purple one. This one didn't stamp all the way here, so I'm gonna put this one aside and maybe use this one. So let me, sh I'm gonna keep these markers here so I don't lose them, but let me show you the purple markers that I'm using. And this is how I tested them here. So it'll be dark to light. So that's how I've got them right here with my center. So um, I'm just gonna put this aside. So the first thing we're gonna do, and I'm gonna do it the same way I did the blue one. So I'll probably fast forward here, which means I'm gonna um, not talk through this. But you'll see that I use the light, then I come in with the dark, I blend with the medium, and then go all over the whole thing with the light again. So. Um, Isn't that pretty? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one out so you can see, because we've got a blue one that's separate that you can see um, how pretty that is. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the purple one out. If I can find my scissors. Oh, there they are. Just show you how it looks off the card.
I hope everybody's well today. I'm doing well. Um, uh, kind of a while back in my videos, I mentioned that I work part-time at Staples. And they went through a big transition where I was working. They lost some people, so I was working a lot of days. And they have since hired some new people. And so they have cut back my hours. And actually, uh, to my liking, they have not scheduled me for a couple weeks, which is nice for me. Um, so I have been able to put more time into, you know, recording videos, making journals, which is what I love, drawing. I also do um, Bible journaling. Um, so I've just had a lot of uh, nice time to uh, catch up on some fun activities for me uh, that you don't, you know, if you work that day, you usually don't put in too much time doing any kind of crafting. I know I don't, uh, I guess because my work, I, at Staples, I work in the copy center and we are busy and always have been short staffed there just in terms of what Staple allows them to schedule. So you really work quite hard, you're on your feet and you know, I'm just usually exhausted. You know, not so exhausted I'm gonna lay down and take a nap, but like I don't want, I can't be concentrating, trying to concentrate. So anyways, it's kind of nice that when you don't work and you know you're not scheduled, you can just move forward with activities. So here this is cut out, I love it. And to give you an idea, I was working on, let me see where I had it. Anyways, let me hold it on to some of these and you'll see how pretty these are. So that's what I'm working on right now is doing some of these flowers and I have a couple of other uh, ideas in mind for activities and I'll be back and show you what we're working on. Okay, after the last um, thing we did, I went to head off camera and I put lace on some pages in each of these signatures. I put signatures together um, I've got three of them, and I put some lace on the pages. So I'm just going to real quick do a flip through of each signature and show you the lace. Now this lace, I actually dyed with the Distress Stain. So it looks like we have a lot of decorating to do in this one. Who? Oh. Kind of pretty how that that. So that's signature one. Signature two um, starts here. This one I put like a gold lace on. And then signature three. This one's kind of a coral colored lace. I think this lace I got at Timu in my Timu haul or whatever. This is a jelly print piece of uh, paper that I inserted in here. And this is a uh, coffee filter. So those are our signatures. Let's see. So that's that. And this journal obviously is flamingo themed. And I thought I would use these flowers and make a little cluster. The first page, I kind of thought I would make a little cluster down here uh, because I like to leave a lot of space for journaling. So I've got some craft paper scraps. I've got the flowers that we did. And I've got my odd paper scraps that I thought I might be able to find some different backing 
for our clusters. Um, you know, and obviously I want something that's going to match. Um, uh, you know, it's going to match the journal. I want something else. Maybe I'll put a piece of craft back there. Uh, maybe like this. Yeah, just something to add to the page. I'm not sure I want that one because this is a purple. So I wonder if we want... Yeah, let's do purple. I like it. I haven't really... I th I'm thinking that I'm going to... Like I did my tropical journal, I, um, I didn't do it vintage. I did it bright colors. So I might... Um, Go ahead and distress these in uh, brighter colors, which means I need all my um, I only have a few <clears throat> handles like this, but I'm going to put them out here with um, the tips. Let me see what other tips I have. It's like I have a purple and a red so let's do them purple and let me see I think I have one uh this what is it wilted violet let's see if we can uh oh that's nice gets rid of some of that white because I did these on cardstock so they have white edges Okay, looks pretty good. And then let's go ahead and do the craft. I need my glue book because I think I'm going to put it down here and just um, go around the edge. There's purple purple and I think we need to put a little purple on this and it'll tone down this pink a little bit bring the purple a little bit up further into the pink make it more like a violet color I like that Okay, I think that's our cluster for that one. So let's get our glue stick. Everything is paper, so I can use the glue stick for that. I like to leave a lot of blank pages, but I... Uh, for journaling, but I do like to put something on there, either a page number or something, just to break up the solid blank space. Do this like this. And then this one, I'm going to use the art glitter glue because these are cardstock. <clears throat> Uh, the flowers I did on 110 index cardstock. So we need to put a little heavier glue on there. I think we'll do that right there. I love it. Okay, there's one. I love it. Okay, and then let's turn this over and let's do number two. It's kind of a yellowish. So I, what I have is, I have this flamingo right there that I think would be cool. It's kind of like a stamp. Um, and let me see if I have... Oh, 
remember, this is that odd piece of paper that uh, cut the flamingo off and I thought we would use this for um, for collaging, but now I'm thinking this would make a great um, horizontal belly band, but we could use maybe part if we couldn't tell it was a flamingo's head, <laughs> or use this side maybe. Yes. What if we put this down here and this right here? I think that would be good. <clears throat> These two pieces I'm going to put back in my scrap bag. What I want though is I'd like to see more of that pink right there. So, um,. I'm not sure what I'm thinking about this. Maybe if I moved it to the center and then moved our flamingo over here, that would be all right. Right? Let's um, not do this one. Let's do these in uh, green or yellow. Let's pick a how about Twisted Citron is a bright green, and that might match. So let's change our head to the green, to our green. Oh yeah, that's a bright green, I like it. I like it so I think we'll go with that but I would like to maybe put a flower I don't want to cover up this flower though so what if we did hmm, I'm really struggling with this one oh I like that let's uh, <laughs> keep this for something else I really like this a lot okay that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to put this one back in my container and we are ready to glue. Oh, I like that. Oh, you know what we have to do though? We are not ready to glue. We have to distress our flower because it's got white edges and they're sticking up. And I have wild honey. So let's use wild honey. get rid of the white yeah when I laid that down I could see the white on the card a lot so okay I think we got it I love it. 
Okay, we got one more and then we'll be on to a different project. Okay, so we want our second page in here. Oh, which is yellow. <laughs> so, got some bright colors over there though because we could bring the pink over to here. What if we did... Something like this and added... I think I'm going to add this. This piece right here. But what I'm going to do, because it was a, a branding strip on a piece of cardstock, it's very narrow. So I'm going to try to rough it up a little bit with our distressor. Okay, so what if we just put that like that? I think that'll bring the blue out of there. I think that's good. Okay, we need our, <clears throat> this one we're gonna need to distress in a pink. So let's put our yellow away. Let's use our saltwater taffy. I have, um, ooh, that's like yellow. We don't want that. We want the red one. Let me see if I have a red one. Oh, look there. I have an actual pink handle tool. Let's try this. Oh, much better. Ah, oh, so one side's kind of orange. All we're trying to do is cover up some of that white. Okay. Okay, and I think I'm just gonna distress this pink. really don't want this distressed much. Just do a little tiny bit of pink around the edge. Okay, I like it. Okay, but should I do it this way, this way, and this way? Looks good to me. I could lay it this way, but let's make it tall, something different. And this craft um, is packing paper. Like when I order off, you know, it, usually Amazon sends everything with a lot of this packing paper all wadded up and I straighten it out and kind of fold it. 
and save it for just this reason. And usually there's ends that don't fold easily. And those are the ones I use like these pieces here. This is cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and use the art uh, glitter glue on here. And this is also, uh, it's like index, 110 index. Okay, so now we've got our second pages. We've got something on there. So these are good for journaling. And I'm gonna call this one a video. I've got some ideas for um, some other ephemera and I need to gather everything up and we'll make that our, I'll do that in the next video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. My channel has been growing kind of quickly in the last few days and I'm so thankful. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.